need to preface all of this stuff that I'm saying by, by this. I am not an expert canner. I have learned everything that I've learned through um, trial and error and the ball big blue book of canning. <laughs> uh, I, and there are some good resources that I've mentioned on my podcast before, like Canning Granny. Um, and I'm a physicist. I understand the ideal gas law. So, But I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. So before you try this stuff, you need to educate yourself and basically just use a good healthy dose of common sense. So don't blow yourselves up. <laughs> it's very hard to do, but it, I suppose it can be done. But you know, I am not the expert. I am just a well-read amateur. <laughs> okay, I'm finally getting around to filming this video where I'm gonna pressure can this broth and you'll just have to forgive me because I'm doing this in my kitchen and I, I certainly don't have a professional kitchen nor do I have a professional lighting setup. So we're just gonna do the best that we can. Um, I'm gonna be using um, some broth that I made and a pressure canner. And I'm hoping to try to take a little bit of the fear away of people using uh, pressure canners. So let's okay, get so started. This is the turkey bone broth that I've made. I'm heating it back up. I had it in the refrigerator uh, while I was gone to Oklahoma over the weekend. Uh, it's just the carcass of a turkey that I cooked with some onions, carrots, celery, and some wild onions, some salt and pepper, some other herbs and spices to try to make it taste good. What I'm gonna be using is my Presto um, canner. All right, I forget what size this is, but I think it's a 16 quart, which is based on the volume it can hold, not the number of jars. Um, Cause I don't like to stack my jars. Um, it is about six years old. Um, a couple of things you'll notice, I have a rack in the bottom. You always need to use a rack because you never want the jars to be making direct contact with the metal that's on the burner. Um, I always check to make sure everything's in good working order. All of my locking plates are uh, in good shape. The next thing I do is I check my lid. I make sure that I can see through the uh, steam pipe there and then I also um, make sure that my gauge looks like it's in good working order. Now I do need to take this and get it calibrated this year. I haven't done that yet but uh, it was on last year so I'm not too worried about it. I make sure that my little pop-off valve is freely moving and then last and probably most importantly, well the gauge is important too, but I make sure the seal is in good shape and I just, this is a new canner so it doesn't need a seal yet or a fairly new canner, um, but my seal looks like it's in good shape, so I'm ready to go. So, um, a quick word about jars. Um, you know, ball and cur are sort of the standard. I think Anchor Glass always also makes uh, jars. I think also Golden Harvest is like Dollar General brand. Um, Anchor Glass is what Walmart, the Walmart store brand sells. These have still got a little bit of water in them where I rinsed them out. Um, jars are important. You want to make sure there's no nicks in the top, that the tops are smooth. Um, I sterilize these in a, in a, a scalding hot wash in my dishwasher and uh, I just rinsed them out when I got them out of there just to make sure there wasn't any uh, debris in them from the dishwasher. Um, using grandma's uh, canning jars is a sweet idea. But glass does age, and so just be aware that if you use Granny's canning jars, they may crack. So um, I try to buy a few new cases of jars every year. They are kind of expensive. You can pick them up at yard sales and stuff um, at a good price, and a lot of times people will be giving them away or selling them on online yard sales. But anyway, so I use whatever I can get my hands on. I'm not particular about brand, although for the fair, I do like to use a branded jar, so a ball or a cur jar is what I like to take. To Another the quick thing about jars, I do not reuse stuff like um, man mayonnaise jars or glass jars that you get at the store um, because the seal probably will not sit right on them. You've got to get a good seal on this stuff or it will be um, unsafe to eat. So I'm kind of a jar snob. I use real canning jars that are purpose made for canning. I don't reuse, I reuse my glass jars uh, from the store for other things, like to put dried beans and stuff like that in, but I don't use them 
for pressure canning. Okay, I've strained my broth. I've still got bits in it. I don't mind bits still being in mine. If you want a perfectly clean, clear broth, you can use a jelly bag or a fine sieve to strain it through. Now I'm gonna load my jars. I prefer for liquids using my narrow mouth jars and saving my wide mouth jars for, or these are regular mouth jars for um, things that, like beans or stuff that are harder to get in and out of the jar. So for a liquid, especially, I will use these regular mouth jars. I've got my canning funnel. My jars are warm from the scalding that I gave them. These, This is warm. So this is a hot pack or a hot process method, which means it won't have to process as long as cold pack like you would do vegetables. So I'm going to spoon this in. Um, the recommendation for quartz is one inch of head space. You've got to have that head space, which means an empty space in there for the vacuum to draw on the jar. So I've got a checker that I'll show you in a minute as I pack. Who needs a Roomba when you've got feathers? Anything that goes on the floor, she's after. Okay, this is the headspace checker I was talking about. The deepest cut is for one inch. So what I will do is I'll put it on the edge of my jar and it's just touching the top of my liquid there. So that means I've got the correct headspace for quartz. Different size jars call for different headspace. So you need to make sure you get the correct one so that you pull a vacuum and seal your jar safe. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll take just a dish towel and I'll wipe the rims off to make sure there's no liquid or anything on them so that I get a good seal um, on my jars. So I just literally am gonna wipe the rims and then I'll put my lids and my rings on. And I buy, I reuse my rims, oh that jar, see that jar's got a nick in it, so I can't use that jar. That one's only good for a flower vase now. So I need to, I didn't pay attention, so I need to transfer this out. I don't reuse my lids ever, these are the lids, but I do reuse the rings. Um, the rings I only use for the canning process, and then I take them off to store my jars, but the lids, once they break that, once I use that rubber seal the first time, I'm done. Canner, uh, I'm using a jar lifter, and I bought one of the nicer heavy-duty ones to load my canner. Um, you'll notice that, unlike with hot process canning or water bath canning, rather, uh, the water doesn't cover these jars. You don't want the water above these jars. It tells you... Um, in the ball blue book or in your canner handbook how many quarts of water should be in your canner um, when it's loaded. I've got five quarts in here. I'm spacing them out. I need to put just a little bit more water in here and then I'm going to put the lid on. So I've got my lids and my rings on my jars and uh, my jars are evenly spaced out. I'm going to put just a little bit more water in here and then I'm going to put my lock. I've got my lid. lid on. It's not locked yet because it, it has to go on in the unlocked position so that the, the notches line up correctly. Um, so what I'm going to do now is lock my lid down. Now we're not processing yet. I have to turn the heat up underneath this canner until I see steam coming out of this exhaust pipe in a steady stream and then and then this lifts up usually I will take a like a butter knife and lift this up and if it lifts up and stays once the steam once the steam is coming out of here at a steady pace then I'm ready to start I put my weight on so my pressure will rise so right now this is not under any kind of pressure yet because we have not stopped up this pipe While yet. I'm waiting on the canner to boil is a great time to wash up the dishes that I've got that's one thing about canning season. You do a lot of dishwashing too. <laughs> um, anyway, so canning season is really all year. In the wintertime, I do beans and broths and citrus. And then in the spring and the summer and the fall, I do whatever bounty there is to do. So canning season is really all year. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a steady stream of steam coming out of the exhaust pipe. So now we're going to test to see if the stopper will stay up and if it does of its own accord then we're ready to go not quite so we're not quite ready need to get it a little hotter and this is a time you can have the heat up high you're going to want to start backing that off though as the pressure rises 
So Okay, now this is staying up of its own accord and there's a good steady stream coming out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my weight over the stopper and now pressure will begin to build. Lid is locked down good. We're ready to go. Pressure is going to begin to build right here. This needs to process at 11 PSI. So I've got to start watching it as it starts to climb. And what I will do is I will gradually back my heat down. Now I have the advantage that I have a gas stove. So that's a lot easier to control my temperature on. But uh, you can do it with an electric stove too. You just have to compensate more for the pressure. So as this starts to rise, when it starts to get close to 10, I'm going to start backing this down. I'm going to start backing my heat off so that it will kind of come to an equilibrium. So you can see the pressure is starting to build. So I'm going to start backing the heat off in just a little bit. But the other thing I want you to notice is how far it is over here to the danger zone. Most, thing process, most things process at our altitude at 10 pounds of pressure. So you would really have to go off and be gone for a minute to get into a dangerous situation. Now, while it is rising, I don't leave the kitchen. I stay in here, I wash my dishes, I do what I need, fill up ice trays or whatever I need to do so that I can monitor this, um, you know, and make sure that it gets to the pressure that it needs to be and it doesn't go above that. But as far as, you know, having to sit here and watch it like a hawk, I look at it every minute or so See, the pressure is still rising, so what I'll do here in just a few minutes, when it gets to about 8 or 9, I'll start backing my heat off, so to compensate for uh, it wanting, needing it to come to equilibrium. Okay, now we're at 10 pounds of pressure. I've got the heat back down to about 4, so that it doesn't keep rising, but I don't want it to go below 10 pounds either. So now I'm ready to start my timer. So for quartz... With hot process bra, you do 25 minutes. So now we're ready to start. So our timer set. Temperature, the pressure seems to be fairly stable. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log on to my computer. I'm going to browse Ravelry for patterns. Maybe get on the virtual knitting group. Do some knitting or crocheting. And wait. Checking every little bit on my pressure to make sure it hasn't gone too high or too low. Don't touch any, don't touch it. Just let it do okay, it. Okay, so the timer has gone off. I have turned the fire out underneath the heat out. You see the temperature is already dropping, but I am not going to touch this until the temperature drops to zero and this bobber falls down. And then it will be safe to take off the weight and to open the lid. So now we just okay. wait. So the stopper has come down. Pressure is at zero, so I'm going to remove the weight. But I always tip it off away from me in case there's any last little bit of steam in there. So there's no steam. So now I'm ready to unlock the lid. It's safe to unlock now. And then I'm going to lift it. It's not very easy to do with one hand. I'm going to lift it up, but I'm going to lift it away from me. And since I need both my hands, I'm going to turn this off. When I open this, I'm going to open it away from me so any residual steam will escape away from my face. I don't need a steam facial tonight. So you can see my jars are here. They all look in good order. You can still see if you look closely there, it's still boiling. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let these cool down a while in the canner so I don't shock them and cause the glass to crack. And then once they've cooled down, maybe for a half hour or 45 minutes, I'll take them out and I'll sit them on a towel. Tomorrow, I will take the rings off of them, label them, and store them. So that's how you can broth. At least that's how I can broth. So I hope you learned So that's something. my first attempt at doing a little tutorial. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if uh, I do other things over the summer, I'll film some more. Um, like I said, by no means am I an expert on doing this, but... You just learn by doing. So you don't need to be afraid of a pressure canner. You just need to make it in, make sure it's in good working order. And then just sit and pay attention to it and you'll be fine. So until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And peace out, y'all. Bye.